Hi, today I'll be doing an alignment based class and the focus will be on the alignment of the feet. We're going to be working a lot with the standing asanas so it's quite a dynamic class and you'll need props for the class so I'd recommend that you get two blocks ready and we're also going to use a strap. So this class really is ideal for beginners because it teaches you all the fundamentals of the standing asanas and when you get your foot alignment correct it really guides the rest of your yoga practice. So let's get started. So let's come to settle on our mats. We're going to start in a supine position lying on our backs with the soles of the feet together. So in Supta Baddha Konasana. So just allow the knees to flop gently out to the sides slowly recline and come to rest on your backs feeling fully supported and grounded by your mat and we'll bring our right hand onto our belly and our left hand onto our chest and we'll just close our eyes and settle into our mats gently observing your natural breath so just try and quiet your mind Bringing yourself to the present moment. Releasing all tension. Releasing all anxiety. They say the mind benefits from stillness and the body benefits from activity. So let's set our intention for the class just to find balance. That beautiful balance that yoga brings us between the passive and the active the yin and the yang, the sun and the moon. So draw your attention to the present moment and set that intention for today's practice. And now let's interlace our fingers, pressing the palms away from us. And then as you inhale, you can reach those arms up above your head, really stretching into the side body. And then exhale to bring the hands back on either side of your legs and use the hands to support your legs as you plant those feet and ground them onto the mat. And now let's just draw the right knee into the chest and hug that knee, feeling that beautiful release in the lower back. Now you can draw the knee towards your shoulder, so opening up the hips a little bit wider. Now we're going to just take hold of the ball of the foot. Open up that leg, so you're bringing the thigh down to the mat, and the sole of the foot is facing the ceiling. And then you can just encourage your left hip to stay planted. So placing your left hand onto that hip, just encouraging it to stay still. Gently allow your right hip to open and loosen up. Now if you want to take an extra extension, let's straighten that leg, drawing the leg down towards the mat. And you should feel a beautiful stretch in the thigh, opening up those hips as well. And now we'll just replace that foot onto the mat. Let's repeat on the left. So drawing your left knee into your chest, hugging that knee, feeling the release in the lower back. And then we'll draw our knees towards our shoulders. So opening up those hips a little bit further. And then we'll take hold of the sole of the left foot and open up that leg for a half happy baby. So drawing the thigh down towards the mat and the sole of the foot is facing the ceiling. And just remember to keep your right hip Stationary. So just gently place your right hand onto that hip just to encourage it to stay on the mat. And then if you'd like an extra challenge, you can straighten that left leg, drawing it down towards the mat. Otherwise, just stay in your half happy baby pose. This is your journey and your time, so nothing to see, nothing to prove, no pressure. And now let's just return that foot back onto the mat. And then you can just cross your ankles and rock gently, massaging the back. And then we'll come up to a seated position. Now let's just roll over onto our knees. So we're coming into a tabletop position. And we're going to 
going to start just with some gentle spinal rotation. So as you inhale, just move your body to the right and then come down in a circular motion towards your heels. Exhale as you move to the left and close your circle. So just synchronize the movement with your own breath. You can close your eyes here, go within. Use this as a form of meditation. It's a lovely way just to wake up our spines, wake up our whole bodies. You'll feel it in the wrists. You can bend your elbows when it feels comfortable for you. And then let's change direction and just keep breathing through it. Beautiful, calming way just to warm up our bodies for our practice. And now let's come to a stationary position. And we're going to just move into cat cow. So inhale to arch your back, gently gazing ahead. And exhale for cat pose. As you round your back, drawing the chin towards the chest. Inhale for cow. And exhale cat. So your wrists are stacked beneath your shoulders, your knees are hip distance apart. And we're just going to extend the right leg back, press into the ball of the foot. We're going to be working a lot with our feet today. And then you can just replace that knee onto the mat. Let's press into our left foot, working those toes, working that calf muscle. And then you can return that knee onto the mat. Now we're going to open up our knees, keeping the soles of the feet together, and gently come to sit back onto your heels, and then walk those hands out in front of you, pressing into the palms of your hands. So feel the stretch and the counter stretch, and then you can gently lower your forehead to the mat. And just breathe through it. This is Adho Mukha. Virasana, downward facing hero pose, very similar to our child's pose. And now you can gently gaze ahead, pressing into those palms, tucking the toes under, and we're going to lift up our hips for our first downward dog of the day. Let's just walk our dog. So gently bending your right knee and gaze under your left shoulder. Use this as an opportunity to really stretch out the left side of the body. And then we'll repeat from the other side. And just walk that dog in your own time, breathing through it, warming up the knees, warming up the body. And now let's find our stable position in our downward dog. So your feet are hip distance apart, the toes are slightly in to give you that inward rotation with, which guides the movement of the pelvis and tilts the sit, sit bones up. And you can start with bent knees because this will really assist you in shifting those sit bones so that they're the highest point of your body. And then you want to encourage that chest to descend. So you're drawing the chest towards your thighs, you're pressing into the palms, the fingers are widespread. And once you've found your position in your dog, you can start to straighten those legs, drawing the heels down towards the mat. And now let's inhale as we roll forward into a high plank. Drop your left knee to the mat, step forward with the right, coming into Anjana Yasana or our crescent lunge. So find the stability in this pose. You're pressing into the big toe mound, the baby toe mound, and the heel of your front foot. Your knee and your ankle are perfectly stacked at 90 degrees. And allow the hips to descend here. So really feel that stable seat that you found in your legs. And then let's inhale, reaching those arms up. We'll bring the hands into Udva Hastasana, which is our upward hand position. So the palms are facing each other. The fingers are widespread. So activate those fingers. And while you're in this position, just focus on finding mobility in the upper back. So you can actually draw the shoulder blades in to create a slight arch in the upper back. 
your Anjana Yasana or Crescent Lunge is actually a preparation for the back bends. So just start to find that mobility at the top of your torso. And now we'll exhale, hands to mat. Tuck the toes under on your back foot. Step back with the right and come back into your downward facing dog. Now inhale to roll forward into high plank. Drop that right knee this time. Step forward with the left. Again, find your stable base in your legs and your feet. Stacking the knee and the ankle. Allowing those hips to descend. And once you've found that stability, let's focus on our mobility. So inhale and raise those arms up. Hands are facing each other. Fingers are widespread. Extend through the top of your arms. Allow the shoulders to feel free and mobile as you draw the shoulder blades in, feeling that slight upward extension in the back. And now let's exhale, hands to mat. Take the toes under on your back foot, step back with your left, come back into downward facing dog. And we're slowly gonna walk our hands and feet together, so come into the short edge of your mat, into Uttanasana, which is our forward fold. So you can start just with nice, generously bent knees. So really flop into this, almost feel like a rag doll. Completely free and relaxed in this pose. You can sway your body from side to side, enjoying the freedom of the neck, completely relaxed. And then let's slowly start to straighten our legs. So working into those hamstrings, you can bend and straighten initially, just to warm up those hamstrings. And then find your position, stabilize your body. In this pose, the outsides of the feet are parallel and your big toes are slightly in. Because again, this gives us a gentle inward rotation of the legs, which creates more space for us to fall forward from the pelvis. And then you want to press into the big toe mound of your feet. So you're slightly shifting your weight forward on your feet. And slowly as you work with this pose, you'll find that you can inch your way forward little bit by little bit. And now let's inhale, coming into halfway lift, hands on the shins, gently gazing ahead, allowing the blood to flow back. And then slowly roll your spine as you come up to a standing position and we'll just rotate those shoulders back, warming up our shoulders. We're going to be working with stabilizing our legs and our feet, but finding mobility in the upper body. So let's just warm up those shoulders and now you can rotate in the opposite direction. Okay, so we're going to focus on our standing asanas now. So for this part of the practice, you'll need your two blocks. So just place those blocks on the right-hand side of your mat, my left. And we're going to start just by coming into a very stable standing asana, so into our Tadasana. But for this one, we're going to start with our feet at hip distance apart. The outsides of the feet are parallel, your toes are slightly in. And just gently start to press into the balls of the feet, you can lift up the heels and then rock back onto the heels, start to ground yourself. Let's just really find balance and stability to begin our practice. And now you can press into the big toe mound, the baby toe mound and the heel, and you can feel how grounding and supportive it is when you work with all three corners of the feet. Sometimes people call it four corners, but it really is the heel and then the two toe mounds. Okay, so now that we've found stability, our feet are really responsible for two things. Number one, the alignment of the pose. So depending on how we place our feet, it will determine how we align our posture for the pose. And secondly, our feet are fundamental to balancing and grounding us in each posture. So we're just going to do a little experiment. You can start with your toes slightly in and just see how that creates an inward rotation of the legs. Now you can place your hands onto your hips and start to just gently move back and forth. And you'll see there's a lot of mobility in the hips and the pelvis when we have that inward rotation of our legs. Now, by contrast, let's open up so that our toes are pointing out, keeping your hands where they are. 
Let's do that same movement. And you'll notice that it's not quite as fluid. But if you want to bend your knees and sway from side to side, there's a lot of movement when the toes are facing out. So essentially, when we're working with any of the yoga postures that require forward and back mobility in the torso, we want to have an inward rotation of the legs. And by contrast, when we're working with the lateral poses that require sideways movement, we want an external rotation of the legs. And it's often very subtle. So another way of getting that slight rotation is just by pressing into different parts of your feet. So keeping your feet parallel and in neutral, just press into the big toe mounds and you'll notice how that gives you a slight inward rotation of the legs. And now by contrast, press on the outsides of the feet and you'll notice how that lifts up the knees and gives you a slight outward rotation. So throughout your practice, just be mindful of how your feet are placed, how the legs are rotated, and how to find stability in the pose. And we're always working with balance in yoga. So for example, if your feet are already, your toes are already in, so your feet are already aligned in such a way that you've got a natural inward rotation of your legs. If you then double that inward rotation by then pressing on the big toe mounds, you'll see how it creates almost too much mobility and it completely destabilizes you. So when we're working with postures where our feet are in and we've already got that inward rotation, we may need to balance ourselves and find stability by then pressing into the outsides of the feet. Okay, so with that awareness, let's start our practice. We're going to start with Pajvottanasana, which is pyramid pose. So just come to standing in Tadasana, ground through all three corners of your feet. You can bring the fingertips to touch and we'll jump into star pose. So in pyramid pose, the alignment of the feet, um, we have a midway stance. So you don't want your ankles to be shooting out beyond your wrists when you're in your star pose. So just check that alignment. And then we can place the hands onto the hips and really focus on our feet. So shift your right foot so that the foot is parallel to the mat. And then we're gonna step our left foot slightly wider than the midline to create that stable base. So the back foot is responsible for our stability and the front foot governs our mobility. So you can press into the heel and the outside of that back foot, really finding that stable base. And then we have to align our hips so that the back hip comes forward and the front hip goes back. And then you want to press into the big toe mound of your front foot just to encourage that gentle inward rotation of the leg because we're going to be hinging forward. So now let's Inhale as we lift our torsos and exhale to fold forward, coming into our pyramid. Find your blocks. Gently hold on to those blocks, trying to keep a good extension in that spine. And then you can gently gaze down at your mat. So our gaze is also important in our yoga practice because it also impacts on our stability and our mobility. So if you are gently gazing down at the mat. That's a very grounding gaze and it's good when you need to find more balance in a posture. And then if you look up at the ceiling, that can be very energizing, but if you're not feeling stable in a pose, it can destabilize you. So just bear that in mind. Now let's bring the hands onto the hips and inhale to come up to standing, shift the feet to face forwards and jump back into Tadasana. Let's repeat on the other side, so you can just move your blocks to the other side of your mat. Okay, so coming to stand in Tadasana, fingertips to touch, jump into star pose, place the hands onto the hips, shift your left foot so that it's parallel to the mat, the toes are facing the short edge of your mat, and then we're going to step that back foot slightly wider than the midline, rotating the foot deeply in. Align those hips so that your torso is facing forward. Press into the big toe mound of your front foot just to guide that inward rotation of your front leg. Inhale as you lift up the, the torso and exhale to fold forward, taking hold of the blocks. You want to have a nice extended back here. So again, just coming back to our balancing in yoga. When we're working with our forward folds, we need to first focus on actually extending the back and having a beautiful concave back, creating that space. 
and then eventually we can fold the body forward. Okay, now let's place the hands onto the hips and inhale to come up to standing. Shift the feet to face forward and jump back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. You can keep one block at the back of your mat and just move the other block to the other corner of your mat. So both your blocks are at the backs of your mat. And now we're going to do Virabhadrasana 1, which is our Warrior 1 pose. So the feet are aligned in the same way as our Pyramid pose. So bring the fingers tips to touch, gently jump your way out. Again, it's a medium stance. Let's place the hands onto the hips as we focus on our feet. So shift your right foot so that it's parallel to the mat. The toes are facing forward. Step that left foot slightly wider than the midline so that the feet are slightly wider than hip distance apart. Draw those hips in line. Settle into your stable base. And then you're gently going to exhale and bend that front knee. Now you might need to widen your stance slightly. So just shift the back foot slightly back until you find a 90 degree angle on your front leg. So your knee and your ankle are aligned. And that will guide the direction of your pose and that will guide the distance of your legs. Now that we've found our stable base, we're going to inhale, raising the arms into Vimanasana, aeroplane arms. And now you can flip the palms up and gently inhale, bringing the hands into upward prayer. So now again, we want to think about the mobility of the upper back. So we've got our beautiful stable base in our legs, and now we want to find mobility. So just as we did in our crescent lunge, Warrior One is also a preparation for back bends. So gently encourage those shoulder blades to work inwards and rotate those shoulders outwards and gently gaze ahead. And if you've found your stability in this pose, you can actually gaze up at your hands. It's very energizing. It allows you to arch that back even more. But if you're finding it destabilizing, then rather just gently gaze ahead and have a neutral gaze. Let's exhale, bringing the hands onto the hips, straighten that front leg, shift both feet to face forward and jump back into Tadasana. Let's repeat on the left hand side. So fingertips to touch, jump your way into star pose. Shift that left foot so that it's facing forward, step the right, just wider than the midline, rotating that foot deeply in. Align your hips so that your torso is facing forward and now exhale to bend. And again, just check the stance of your legs here. You may need to shift that back foot slightly back to bring your knee and your ankle in line. Once you've found your stability, let's inhale, reaching those arms up into aeroplane arms. And then you can flip the palms to face the ceiling and inhale as you come into upward press. So again, let's find that mobility in the upper back. So drawing the shoulder blades in, gently gazing ahead. And if you're feeling really stable, you can start to gaze up at the fingers. And now exhale, bringing the hands onto the hips. Straighten that front leg, shift both feet towards the front and jump back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Our next three standing asanas involve a lateral movement of the torso. So now we're wanting a slight external rotation of the legs. So we're going to start with Utita Trikonasana, which is our extended triangle. So bring the fingertips to touch, jump into star pose, hands onto the hips. Shift your right foot so that it's facing forward. Now this time we want to imagine that we're on a tight rope. So the heel of the front foot lines up with the midway arch of the back foot. And then you can just gently draw the toes slightly in, stabilize through your back foot, so pressing into the outside of that back foot. And then just remembering to gently encourage the knee and the leg to lift and rotate outwards. Once you've found your stable base in your triangle pose, your torso is facing forward, let's inhale and extend those arms. And now just start to isolate the movement of the torso from side to side, maintaining that stable base in your legs, 
and gently just moving to feel that isolated movement. Now inhale as you broaden through the chest and exhale as you shift the body across coming into your triangle pose. So you can rest the hand onto the shin, you can place the hand onto the ankle, you can rest the fingers onto the mat, whatever works for you. The key in our triangle pose is that we want to try and, and maintain an extension of the lower body. So your torso is gently rotating outwards. You need to keep that shoulder blade lifted, you need to keep the rib cage lifted. So imagine that you're pressing against a wall and your body is perfectly flat, leaning against a wall. And now you can start to look up at your hand. Inhale as you come to standing. Placing the hands onto the hips. Let's shift that right foot so that it's facing forward and we're just going to rotate our left leg now so that the toes are facing the, the short edge of the mat. Again, line up your heel with the midway arch of that back foot. Find your stable base, pressing into the outside of the back foot, the toes are slightly in. Encourage that gentle external rotation of the front foot to guide the mobility of the torso. Let's inhale, extend those arms up. Again, just start to isolate that movement and find freedom in the pose. And now inhale as you lift up the chest, exhale as you come down into your triangle pose. And again, just allow the hand to settle wherever it's comfortable for you. Being mindful of that beautifully extended torso, particularly the underside of the body. Drawing your rib cage up, you're rotating that shoulder back, drawing the shoulder blades in. And now let's gently gaze up at the top hand as we inhale and come back to standing. Hands onto the hip, shift both feet to face forward. Jump back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Our next posture is Warrior 2 or Vira Bhadrasana 2. So it has the same alignment as triangle pose. The only difference is that your stance is slightly wider than a medium stance. So let's bring the fingertips to touch, jump back into star pose, hands onto the hips, rotate that front foot so that the toes are facing the short edge of the mat. Keeping the heel and the midway of the arch in a perfect line. Inhale and reach those arms up and exhale as you bend the front knee. Now just check your alignment here. You want the knee and the ankle to be perfectly aligned. If you feel like you're overshooting that ankle, then just shuffle the back foot slightly to widen your stance. And your toes are slightly in on the back foot and you're pressing into the outside of that foot for stability. You're lifting up the shoulders, lifting up the chest and gently gazing across the front hand. Beautiful strong pose and just be mindful of that slight external rotation of your front leg. Now let's place the hands on the hips, straighten that leg, rotate both feet to face forward and now we're going to repeat on the other side. So shifting that left foot so that the toes are facing, facing the short edge of the mat, your heel and the midway arch are aligned and just bring your toes in slightly on your back foot. Inhale, reaching those arms up and exhale as you bend down into your warrior. Again, checking the alignment of the knee and the ankle. So you may need to shift that back foot slightly to widen your stance. Being mindful of that gentle external rotation of the knee. You're gazing across your fingers. Torso is strong. Broad chest. Gently breathing in the strong, fundamental yoga pose. And now let's inhale as we come back to standing, place the hands onto the hips, shift both feet to face forward and jump back into your Tadasana Mountain Pose. Our next pose is also a lateral pose, extended side angle, which is called Utita. Pajva Konasana. So it has the exact same foot alignment as Warrior 2. So bringing the fingers to touch, let's jump back out into star pose, placing the hands onto the hips. Rotate that front foot so that the toes are facing the short edge of the mat. 
bring the toes in slightly on your back foot and press into the outsides of the back foot. Check the alignment. Are your, is your heel lining up with the midway arch of your back foot? Now you want to encourage a gentle external rotation of that front leg for mobility. So exhale as you bend down. We're going to come through our warrior two pose to find our extended side angle. So again, you may need to just shuffle that back foot slightly for a beautiful wide stance. And then we're going to reach for our blocks. So our blocks should be on the outside of that front foot. And then be very mindful of maintaining your posture in your torso. So you want to rotate that shoulder back, drawing the shoulder blades in. You're lifting up through the rib cage and you're drawing your, your, your rib in at the bottom and lifting it up at the top. You're trying to create a perfect line from your toes all the way up the side body. And once you've found your pose, you can extend the arm and just gently gaze ahead. And now let's place the hand back onto our hip. We're going to come into another variation of extended side angle. So you can release that hand from your block and bring the elbow to rest on your bent knee. So imagine that you're carrying a tray of food. So this arm is also at a 90 degree angle and the palm is facing up. And again, just be mindful of rolling the shoulder back, opening up those ribs, extending through the torso. And now you can inhale and reach the arm up again, creating a perfect line from the fingers all the way down to the toes. And now let's inhale as we come back through warrior two and straighten that leg, shifting both feet forward, hands onto hips and jump back into Tadasana mountain pose. Okay, let's repeat our extended side angle onto the left hand side. So fingers to touch, star pose. Hands onto hips, rotate that front foot. Check that the heel and the arch are aligned. Draw your toes in on the back foot. Inhale, reaching those arms up. Exhale as we come through warrior two. Check the alignment of the knee and the ankle. Once you've found that alignment, let's place the hands onto the hips and we're gonna sink down Find that block behind your front foot. Now you want to lift up the torso, drawing the shoulder blade in, keeping that shoulder rotated back. And once you've found your pose, let's inhale and reach up and over with the arm, gently gazing ahead. Exhale to bring the hand onto your hip. Let's move into our second variation. So we're coming into extended side angle, resting the elbow onto that knee, palm facing up. Once you've found that extension and, the, and that rotation in the upper body, let's inhale as we reach that arm up and over. And on your next inhalation, let's come back through warrior two, straighten that front leg, shift both feet to face forward, and let's jump back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Okay, our last standing asana for today is a beautiful restorative asana. It's our wide-legged forward fold, Prasarita Paratonasana. So for this, let's use our blocks again. You can bring the blocks to the front of your mat, in the middle of your mat, and come to standing in the middle of your mat, but at the back of your mat. So we'll come back into Tadasana, fingertips to touch, and jump out into star pose. Now for this pose, you want a definite inward rotation of the legs because it's a beautiful forward fold. So you can rotate the legs in by gently encouraging those toes to come in slightly. So the outsides of the feet are parallel to the mats and your big toes are slightly in. Let's place the hands onto our hips, bringing the thumbs into the sacrum to support your back as we extend forward. Now inhale and lift up through the chest and exhale to fold forward. Try and maintain a beautiful extension in the back. As I said earlier in our forward folds, we need to actually focus on trying to have an extended concave back. And then you can bring your hands to rest on your blocks. You can actually come up onto the fingertips 
is this will assist with really creating a concave back. And let's just gently gaze ahead, creating that impression in the spine. And now we can widen our stance slightly so you can heel toe the feet slightly out, remembering to bring them back into alignment so that the rotation of the legs remains stable. And then we're going to use our blocks, placing them in line with the midline. You're going to bend your elbows and gently lower that head, coming into a deeper forward fold. to your fingertips and now just heel toe those feet slightly in place the hands onto the lower back thumbs into the sacrum and inhale as you come back up to standing and we'll just heel toe our feet back to mountain pose okay we're going to remove our blocks now we won't be using them for a while so you can just place them in the middle of your mat and we're going to put all these poses into a vinyasa sequence. So just come to settle towards the back of your mat, coming back into our Adho Mukha Virasana, which is our downward facing Virasana or hero pose. So the knees are open and the soles of the feet are together, creating space for the belly to fold forward. Walk your hands out in front of you and allow the forehead just to come to rest on your mat. And let's just stay here for a few breaths to recover after all our standing asanas. And now gently gaze the head, pressing into those palms, tucking the toes and then lifting up for downward facing dog. Settle into your dog, pressing into the heels, pressing into the palms, drawing the chest towards your thighs. And now you can drop your right knee to the mat, step forward with the left, coming into Anjana Yasana or our present lunge. Inhale, raise those arms, palms facing each other, arms parallel. Exhale, hands to mat. Tuck the toes and draw on your back foot. Now plant that foot slightly wider than the midline. We're coming into our pyramid pose. So stabilize through your back foot, straighten that front leg. And we're gonna raise the hands, bringing them into the sacrum, gently gazing at the ground in our pyramid pose. Now inhale to come to standing. And exhale as you bend your front leg for warrior one. You may need to shuffle a little bit just to get your alignment here. Find your stable base and then inhale, reach those arms up for upward prayer. Exhale, hands to hips. Now we're going to shift into warrior two. So bring that back foot so that it lines up with the heel of the front foot. And you may need to just heel toe a little bit wider to widen your stance. Exhale to sink down into your lunge, stacking the knee and the ankle. Inhale as we raise our arms and gently gaze across the fingers. Now from this position, we're gonna come into extended side angle. So bringing the elbow down onto the knee, lifting up and over for your extended side angle. And then inhale as we come back through warrior two and let's just reverse our warrior for balance. So just allowing the back hand to gently rest on your knee reaching up and over and gently gazing under the shoulder of your top arm. And then come back through warrior two, let's straighten that leg, bringing the hands onto the hips, coming into triangle pose. So you may need to shorten your stance a little bit. Again, check the alignment of the heel and the midway arch of your back foot. And now let's inhale as we raise those arms, shifting that torso across coming down into our triangle pose. 
and exhale to come back to standing. Rotate that front foot so that both feet are facing forward. The outsides of the feet are parallel, the toes are slightly in. Bring the hands onto the hips. Inhale as you lift up your chest. Exhale to come forward into our forward fold. And we'll just rest on our fingertips. And now you can just gently gaze down at the mat, lengthening your neck. And now let's look up, placing the hands onto the hips. And inhale to come up to standing. Let's shift our left foot, your right foot, my left foot. Bringing the heel and the arch in line. Inhale, raise those arms. And exhale as you shift across for triangle pose. And now inhale to come back to standing, hands onto the hips. Bend that front leg, shift the back foot slightly to widen your stance as we sink into our warrior two position. Inhale, reaching those arms up, gently gazing across the fingers. And now let's bring our elbow onto our knee as we extend up and over for extended side angle. Inhale to come back through warrior two and let's reverse our warrior. Warrior two pose, hands onto the hips. Step that back foot slightly in and slightly wider than the midline. Rotate your torso to face the front. Align those hips. Exhale as you bend into the knee on your front leg. And inhale, raising the arms up for warrior one. Exhale, hands to hips, straighten that front leg. Inhale, lifting the torso up. Exhale as you hinge forward for pyramid pose. Just hold your pyramid, you can gently gaze down at the mat, it's more grounding. And now let's exhale, bringing the hands onto our mats. You can bend your front knee, drop the back knee onto the mat, untuck those toes. Settle into your crescent lunge. And then inhale as you bring the hands up. Parallel hands, palms facing each other. Extending through the fingers. And exhale, hands to mat. Tuck the toes under on your back foot. Step back into downward facing dog. Settle into your dog. Let's just take a nice deep breath here. And now let's lower the knees to the mat. The feet are touching, the knees are slightly apart. And sink back into this version of hero pose. Now we're going to slowly walk our hands back. So we're coming to a seated Now we're going to slowly walk our hands back, so we're coming to seated. And you can just shift onto your buttocks, come to sit in the center of your mat. We're going to move into some seated poses now, so we'll start with Dandasana, which is our staff pose. So the legs are extended in front of you, the feet are flexed, your quads are activated, and you can shift those glutes back slightly just to encourage the pelvis to tilt gently forward. You want to imagine that you're creating a perfect L shape with your body. Bring the fingers to rest on either side of your hips. Lift up the torso. Draw the shoulder blades in and gently gaze ahead. And now let's release. We're going to work with our straps. So we're going to do some of the forward folds. So just have your strap accessible. Bend up that right knee, bringing the sole of the foot towards your groin. And then you can draw that knee down to the mat. And actually just shift the calf muscle slightly to create that space to really bend that knee. And the sole of the foot is pressing gently into your upper thigh. And now we're going to take hold of our straps. You can fold your strap in half, holding it with both hands. Inhale as you reach up, 
and exhale as you fold forward, bringing the strap around the ball of the foot and gently gazing ahead. So in our Jhana Shishasana, which is our head to knee pose, you want to begin with a beautiful concave straight back. So the tendency in all of our forward folds is to want to just to round the back and drop the head. But we need to start by creating the impression of a beautiful extended back. So let's just stay in this variation of the pose. Gently gaze ahead. You can bend your elbows, keeping the elbows almost at shoulder height and just being mindful of that extension in the lower spine. And now let's release. You can replace the strap onto the mat. And then gently raise that right knee. We're coming into Marichyasana, which is our sage's pose. We're gonna do some twisting here. So place the right hand behind you. Raise the left arm up. And bring that left arm to the outside of the right knee. So this is a close twist. Really massages the abdominals, massages the internal organs. Twists are good for digestion. Now inhale, raising that arm up. Return that arm to the mat. And now let's raise our right hand, bringing that to the inside of the knee for an open twist. raising that arm up, replacing it onto the mat, straightening out that right leg. You can release the leg, shake it out a little bit, get the circulation going. And now have your strap ready as we repeat on the left hand side. So bending up that left knee, bringing the sole of the foot as close to the groin as possible, and then gently guiding that knee down onto the mat. You can move the calf flesh to create space. So you're placing the sole of the foot into the top of the thigh, and then take hold of your strap with both hands. Let's inhale as we raise those arms up and exhale as you fold forward, wrapping that strap around the ball of the foot. The foot is flexed. You can bend your elbows and you're gently encouraging that spine to extend as you gently move forward. So again, let's just gaze ahead and we'll stay in this variation of Janashashasana trying to create that impression of a concave back. You can even try and lift up your chest, drawing the shoulder blades in to encourage that concave action. Okay, now let's slowly release. You can place the strap back onto your mat. Lift up that knee with your left hand, placing the right hand down beside you. Let's inhale, reach up with the left, and we'll start this time with an open twist. So the hands active, the fingers are active, and you're gently gazing across your right shoulder, keeping that torso raised, keeping that spine beautiful and long. Now inhale as you reach that left arm up, replacing it on the mat, and this time we'll move into a closed twist. So bringing the right elbow on the outside of that left knee, gently gazing across your left and in these sorts of poses we need to be mindful of activating our straight leg so keeping the foot flexed on your right leg while you're in your twist and then inhale as you raise the arm up exhale bringing it back onto your mat and let's return that leg to the mat and just shake it out okay we're going to do one more seated forward fold we're going to work with Paschimottanasana, which is our classic forward fold. So let's use a block. So come to sitting on the edge of your block. Shift your glutes back so it'll really encourage a gentle pelvic tilt, which helps you with your forward fold. And we're going to use our straps again. So you can start just by wrapping the strap around the balls of your feet. And again, we want to be mindful of trying to create that concave back as we fold forward. So inhale to lift up out of the hips and exhale as you extend the body forward, maintaining that 
beautiful concave back, that beautiful extension in the spine. So just gently gaze ahead. It's a very active pose. I struggle a lot with my back. I've got a very curved back. So these poses are so important just to create that impression of extension. And we'll just keep holding here. Let's take one more inhalation. And sigh it out. And now we can release those straps. Gently come back to seated. And remove your block, placing the blocks here at the, at the center of your mats just so that they're accessible for our last pose of the day. We're going to come into a supine pose, so just come to resting on your back with the knees bent. And let's just take a few deep breaths here to calm ourselves and restore after our practice. And our final pose for today will be bridge pose or Chatush Padasana, which is our four-footed pose. So you can place the palms so that they're facing down, pressing into the mat. You can bring the soles of the feet closer towards the glutes. So bring your heels in so that the feet, your ankles are resting just underneath your knees. Take a deep inhalation and then just gently lift up that pelvis coming into bridge pose. And come onto your shoulders so that the shoulders are carrying the weight of the torso. And then you want to squeeze your glutes. But as you squeeze your glutes, you may find that the knees want to splay out. So just encourage those knees to come back. The knees are parallel, pressing into the feet, grounding into those feet. And once you've found your position, you can gently edge the heels in slightly as you lift up the pelvis even more and just Try and touch the back of your heels with your hands. We'll just hold here for a few breaths. With each breath, try and lift up a little bit further, encouraging more of a back bend. And now while you're in your bridge pose, try and find your block. Let's take one block. We're going to come into a restorative variation of this pose. So place the block at your sacrum. You may find that you can sink down a little bit, so it's far more restorative. There's pressure on the back. Find that comfortable position. You can hold your block for stability. And once you've found that position, just allow the arms to flop out to the sides, gently restoring your body. Feeling that release in the back. Your legs are relaxed, your arms are relaxed. And you can just gently gaze up at the ceiling and close your eyes. release those blocks so now very carefully lower your back down onto the mat vertebra by vertebra move all the props out of the way as we come to find our final relaxation we're just going to start by bringing the knees into the chest and hugging those knees rocking from side to side to release the back completely after our bridge pose and now you can take both hands Find the balls of the feet, so the hands are on the inside of your legs. And we're just going to open up for a full happy baby pose. So drawing those thighs down towards the mat. And you might find in this pose that the coccyx wants to lift, so just encourage the full spine to be supported by your mat, drawing that coccyx down. And gently close your eyes and just enjoy this beautiful restorative pose. And now you can place the soles of the feet together and then peace.
plant those feet onto the mat, extending one leg out at a time, coming into our Shavasana, our relaxation. The feet are mat distance apart, allow them to flop gently out to the sides, release any tension in the body, release any trapped flesh, just find a comfortable position, your arms are lying at your sides, your palms are facing up. You can even rock the neck from side to side, just releasing any tension in the neck. And then come to stillness. Tuck that chin in slightly to elongate the neck. You can draw your shoulder blades in slightly just to open up the heart center. Closing your eyes. Completely relaxing. Enjoying this quiet moment being fully present on your mat. And if the mind starts to wander, just encourage it to come back to your breath and connect with your breath. Bring the feet together, pointing the toes. Then inhale and extend the arms up above your head. Give yourself a good stretch. Exhale as you bring the knees in towards your chest, hugging those knees, rocking from side to side. And then you can slowly rock over onto the right hand side into a fetal position. And then when you're ready, lift yourself up to seated just come to sitting on your mats either either in a half lotus or an easy pose whatever works for you and we'll just gently inhale as we raise those arms up and exhale as you bring your hands to your heart center let's gently bow our heads honoring the light amongst us within us just being grateful for this time that we've had on our mats together. A little bit of me time, a little bit of soul time. Namaste. Have a beautiful day and thanks for joining me. Take care.